Hey there, welcome back to Mini Urban Farm. Today I am walking you through how I am going to be planting a set it and forget it garden using a whole bunch of things that I have sourced um, as far as seeds go for fall of 2023. Now this is a low maintenance, um, virtually fail proof garden strategy for fall, um, which I'm really excited about. So I came through and weeded all of these beds that needed a whole bunch of cleanup. Um, I basically just poured down some compost and prepped the garden beds for planting. Now this is the first bed. You can see I have my drip irrigation here um, and I have over here a whole bunch of clean empty space. Um, I think there was maybe one or two plants that I left. I found this little parsley plant here that had survived and I have some oregano over there um, and then I have another patch of oregano in this bed over here. You can see this one is still trying to go to seed and flowering so I'll leave this in place for now and hopefully we'll be able to seed save this. Now on this channel I talk all the time about how I only spend about three or four hours every week in the garden in order to grow tons and tons of food like two or three hundred pounds worth of food all right um, I have an entire course it's called plan grow harvest I will leave the link below if you're interested in checking out exactly how I do that um, but in this season all right where we are going through a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'm currently pregnant, expecting our first child, um, and my family has had some health problems and we're kind of managing through that, um, coming out of the other side of that right now. I really need something that is extra low maintenance, meaning less than three or four hours a week. So I have put together a strategy in order to grow the most amount of food with the least amount of time possible, and I will be breaking that down for you guys today. So the first step in the strategy is to pick the right plants. Now, we are always striving to pick the best and most prolific plants that grow in our garden, right? You should be doing that too if your goal is to grow as much food as possible. However, with the plants that I have selected, I have, oops, there goes one of them. With the plants I've selected, I have tons and tons of seeds for fall. Um, probably less than I usually have, but still, more than I was planning on. Um, I have selected things that first of all, grow prolifically. All right, I don't want anything that I don't think is gonna give me a substantial harvest. I wanna make the most use of my space um, as possible, number one. Two, nothing that requires a ton of effort. All right, you guys, Number two, we are not going with anything that requires a ton of effort. Now you guys know that I love growing tomatoes, um, especially indeterminate tomatoes. I love growing things vertically and vining things. Um, however, they do require a lot of effort to trellis. Even the things that kind of trellis themselves, like green beans, you still have to be on top of them on a regular basis in order for them to do well and not get overrun um, and just make sure that they are trellising in the right place. So unfortunately, with this strategy, all right, I don't wanna have to be doing that, and we are cutting out anything that vines or that uses a trellis as well. Next on that list is things that are pest-free, all right? I know that, you know, there's always gonna be some pests in the garden, that is a given. However, there are definitely certain seeds and certain plants, all right, like my arugula, for instance, here, that require a lot less maintenance because the pests just don't flock to them quite as much as they flock to other things. All right, I know that like my tomatoes, for instance, get a lot of pests and I'm constantly having to baby them. Um, but a lot of salad greens don't have that problem. So we are selecting not only um, types of plants, but also varieties that are known to be pest free. And if you have something like that that you've grown before, the same way I know in my garden what generally stays free of pests, then you can use those in your low maintenance effort-free garden. And lastly, in this category, we are going to be planting things that can be direct sown only. Nothing that has to be planted in the greenhouse and then um, babied until it gets into the soil, into the garden, all right? There are a lot of things which you can direct sow, most things, in fact, as far as seeds go, you can direct sow in the garden. However, throughout the years I have learned that a lot of the cutworms and other insects find those seedlings really, really quickly and like a cutworm, all right? They cut them down and then you end up without any seedlings at all, which is why I use the 
greenhouse a lot of the times um, to start my my vegetables and my seeds so in this climate in Florida zone 9b central Florida um, I don't have a, a frost problem typically um, when I'm starting my seeds that is not what I use the greenhouse for generally what I use the greenhouse for is to baby my seedlings until they go into the garden but this time I'm cutting that out nothing that needs to be babied at all Step number two in this low maintenance garden is planting out densely and knowing what grows very, very quickly. Now, I am always a fan of planting things out densely. In my course, I talk all about how I plant things densely on a regular basis um, and experiment with that quite a bit. However, for this method, not only are we planting densely because I don't wanna to have to weed anything at all, we are using the time to maturity, right, for a plant um, to know what will grow really quickly to not only block out the weeds, but so that we get a quicker harvest. Um, I know, for example, that radishes will grow very, very quickly. They have about a, I think it's 18 to 20 um, turnaround time for the quickest radishes. Um, 30 days max is when I usually harvest my radishes. Radishes. So from now to 30 days, I could be eating radishes. Um, the same thing with a lot of salad greens. You will get baby greens from mustard and arugula. Um, the same as with a lot of other salad greens very, very quickly. So if I want food quickly, I want it now, um, and I want to not have to weed the garden and do very little work for it, I'm gonna plant out things that are pest free and grow quickly, like this Japanese red mustard and my arugula. As far as actual vegetables go, I am planting out a ton of jade bush beans. Um, these have about a 55 day, I think it is, from what I've experienced. Um, you can always find the information on the back of the seed packet there. They have a ton of information for you. Um, but generally, my jade bush beans have stayed exactly that pest free and such a quick turnaround time. I get tons and tons of food from these. Um, so naturally, I'm filling my garden space with a ton of this. Now, if you are looking to start your garden, I have an entire workbook outlining exactly step by step on how you would start your dream garden. I will leave the link in the description so you can go check that out if you'd like. Now, of course, you can't just plant out whatever you want for fall season because there are things that won't grow here. If I try to plant out sweet potatoes, as lovely as that idea might be when the frost, right, this Florida frost into the 40s and 30s hits, the sweet potatoes likely won't grow. So for fall, I am also selecting plants that do really well in fall. That includes a lot of root vegetables, all right, like my carrots here that I am growing. These are beautiful purple and white carrots. Um, and I'm planting things out like parsley that I know is very frost hardy um, and spinach and things like that. So not only are we trying to keep things pest free, prolific, densely planted, um, we are also having to consider the list for fall. Now, if you're doing this for spring, you'll probably have a lot more variety um, or a lot, many, a lot more options at least. Um, but for fall, we are having to consider a lot of root crops, which is not a bad thing, um, and a lot of salad greens as well. Now, my last video was an entire list, right? A seed haul of everything I'm gonna be growing this season and why I've selected it. Um, you know, why I've selected each of these varieties and what they look like and what they taste like and, and all of that. So if you're interested in that, um, I will leave that also um, linked to this video so you can go and check that out. That was my last video. I'm not gonna go through every single variety that I am planting out today. Um, but the one thing I do wanna leave you with is I've had to make consciously a very hard decision to not plant out anything that I know requires a lot of time and a lot of effort and the things that I'm planting out today don't require that kind of time and effort so even though I won't be getting my indeterminate tomatoes my Roma tomatoes for sauces and all of those things um, and some of the more delicate items that I traditionally grow like my butternut squash and things like that for fall I am still getting or I will still be getting a really good harvest and I won't have to be out here every single day so if that is something you're interested in just know that you will have to make compromises on certain things all right and then the piece of the puzzle that brings it all together of course is my drip irrigation system you can see my drip lines here this is my main line that black piece right there that tube um, and off of that i have drip lines these have little emitters in them and that's where the water comes out they're evenly spaced at i think about six inches or so here um, and i have those lines all over the garden um, as well as these little sprinkler things these are micro sprinkler heads micro emitters right and you can turn them on and off um, it allows me to adjust the water flow and they basically come out in like a fan through this little blue top here 
Now, I do say that this is the piece that holds it all together because if you've ever tried to hand water an entire garden, you know that it gets tedious fast. Like, it's nice to come out here in the morning and in the afternoons and walk the garden and see the garden and all of that stuff, you know, see how it grows. But hand watering a whole bunch of plants gets very tiring very quickly, even for a small garden. However, there is one piece still missing. And that is a timer. All right, so all of my drip irrigation is connected to this timer. You can see it is on auto. It goes off twice a day for 25 minutes at this point, um, and you can adjust as needed. This is connected to my spigot, the house spigot, right? I have a splitter on it, so I can still use a garden hose or anything if I need to. And then my timer is on here, and this connects down and into my garden over there. Now this is really gonna be the key because you can have a drip system all you want, and then if you have to come out here and turn it on manually twice a day, you're still doing a lot of work, all right? Even if it's just coming out here and like opening the spigot, waiting 20 minutes and turning it back off, you could forget to turn it off. It just, you know, it gets to be a lot of moving pieces at once. So the drip timer allows me to not even think about it. Hence the name, set it and forget it, all right? Today, I am planting out everything here in this garden um, with all of my lovely seeds and plants everything is going in and then I will water everything in using the drip irrigation system and then it is already set to be watered again this afternoon which is perfect all right because it will do it again the next morning and the next afternoon and so on and so forth and I don't have to worry about it the only thing I have to come do is harvest my vegetables when they are ready because I have ensured that they are pest free planted out densely so no weeds grow in between them and very prolific now I know that drip irrigation can be scary. I used to think that drip irrigation was terrifying before I set up not this, not only this garden, but my other garden as well on a drip system. I have an entire video on how to set up all of the drip irrigation. I will leave it on the screen here somewhere so that you guys can see part by part exactly what you need and how simple it is. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.